Good morning, folks. Today we are in a transitional period where the Earth disruptions are mainly geomagnetic. Tropical development has plateaued and magnitude 6 earthquakes should return from their little hiatus by Saturday night. We'll see why in a moment, plus take a look at the space weather indices including the fact that far side eruptions continue just behind the limb. An incredible new paper is bringing together two major observations from our community. Let's get to this. Let's start at spaceweathernews.com, find 193 angstroms of our star, relatively calm. Little pop coming just south of the northern coronal hole there, surface surge only, and as you can see, solar flaring remains very low. But will that continue? Yesterday I mistakenly said that the northern sunspot incoming was by himself, but he was just a bit separated from trailing umbras. Today we can see that indeed it is a complex sunspot structure that will come head to head against the earth facing quiet effect in another few days. Three days of solar wind, not telling us much, so here's seven days. You can see in yellow both of the latest coronal hole stream impacts, including the one still impacting now and driving the geomagnetic storms. Isolated disruptions of a significant level are present as well. All due to the departing coronal hole down south. It's the northern opening incoming, however, that could bring back the seismicity, but remember, northern openings haven't been quite as strong lately. Top news today begins with an aesthetic wonder, a great article and video on changes to the bright spots on Ceres. They change as they enter and exit sunlight. The better news story is this. Using SDO and stereo, mainstream science now better recognizes simultaneous and coupled solar eruptions, what the observers have been calling chain reaction flaring. Nice confirmation. But what makes this so special is why chain reaction flaring is possible. The magnetic CMEs disrupt large-scale solar structures and can induce eruptive activity across the star. And these structures can extend out an entire solar diameter or more. So when I look back to this article from last week, the focus of Saturday's Fly on the Wall podcast, we remember why the comet event was significant. Its magnetic field was strong enough to begin pulling and bending the magnetic field of Mars. Well, if it works on a planet, then the more densely packed field structures of the Sun should be susceptible to sun diving comets, much more so than a CME, which is far less dense, meaning we now know why comets trigger CMEs, and with a chain reaction coupling mechanism, we also know why the CMEs won't always be fired at the comet. Things are getting more interesting here by the day, guys. It's a good thing we're all watching together. We've got pressure and radar forecast across the globe. Major winter events taking a last shot at both the United States and Europe. We'll have some current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 4.05 a.m. here in the desert. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Oh.